Hello everybody and welcome to another hobby cheating video. This week our Skaven journey continues and we're on to something a little different and interesting. This week we're going to hit up the Warp Blaster and that means, well, it means several things. You'll see. Let's get into it. Uh, the strict technomancer that is Vinci V. Let us get into the technique and learn it Vinci V style. Now, the Warp Blaster is actually a really cool new war machine and it's really big and honestly complicated, like by the standards of versus a clan rat, of course. There's a lot going on here. So, as a result, we're going to need to break this one into two parts. And I wanted to use this video to take you through two techniques for how I'm attacking things specifically. So, in this video, I want to break down how to do wood texture, and I want to show you how I'm doing the red armor in detail on my Skaven if you want to use this really awesome super pop and punch and red for your own particular armies, whatever they may be Skaven or not. So that's what we're going to tackle this week. We'll pick up next week and we're going to show you some really cool things with warp glow and stuff like that. But for now, let's talk about those. Let's head over to the desk. Let's get painting. All right, let's start with the more boring part, which is the wood. That's right, that's me. You know, YouTube is all about uh, making sure that people stay engaged. So I decided to start with the boring thing so many of you click away right now. Really, my genius knows no bounds. But I think there's a lot to be said for this. Painting good wood texture can be time consuming, uh, but I think it's really worth it. We start by just laying down a base coat of Pro Acryl, uh, black brown here basically. And this is a really nice color. It has this very dark brown color. It's got uh, so a little bit of green tones in it. It's good. Okay. And sorry, brown gray. I mean, I apologize. Uh, and then what we're going to do is I'm going to start integrating Pro Acryl Red Gray and eventually some AK uh, third gen buff, right? So an ivory tone. Again, you don't need these exact paints. A warm gray and an ivory. Pick them. Now let's talk about the technique, because that's, that's actually what this is. There's nothing to the paints. You could use any paints to do this. Let's talk about the technique. Once everything's base coated, then we're going to get out our sharp, thin brush, and I'm going to start tracing all of the individual lines of the wood. Some of the wood on this does not have the texture, just because of the nature of like how the shape is, which is fine. You can do this whether or not the wood texture is present you're effectively drawing a long, slightly swooping thin line. So you let it curve and swoop and move just slightly. So if you actually have the, that texture there, if they've already sculpted it in, just trace the existing slightly swoopy lines. If you've got a flat piece, just look at anything that has sculpted wood and do the same. You can add little knots or things like that. But what I'm doing with the first pass is just making sure, you'll notice there's not a huge difference, but I'm creating those very basic striations with this sharp, thin brush. This is just paint and water and a sharp brush and a lot of brush control. From there, I move up into more red gray and begin recovering some of the lines. But here's an important thing. I'm actually going to do two passes with this. It's quite thin, so I will not reach full opacity and that's intentional. I'm making it thin so that the first time I don't trace all of my previous lines. Our goal is not here to make, and this is where I see people go wrong. They just do every line all the way up and then retrace every line they did as though they're just like lay down a dark gray line, light gray line, white line, or just trace every line. No. What we're going to do is I'm only doing part of the wood. So some of the edges, some of the lines get this and I make it kind of random. I don't trace everything and I don't trace it all the way through. When I do the second pass with the same paint, it'll all increase the opacity, and this time I cover even less. Same trick, we do not trace all of our first lines. We want some of the wood to still show just those initial lines. Those are, that's effectively our shadow area, our texture showing in the shadow. From there, I begin integrating in the ivory, slowly increasing that warm white content. And the same rules apply. As I'm, as I'm applying that white, I'm not, not just tracing the whole line, I'm covering less and less. When you're doing these kinds of striations or painting with texture, it's exactly the same as layering. Except instead of doing one smooth brush stroke, you're doing individual lines, but you cover less and less and less each time. 
Now with wood, it will tend to look good if you make the lines gather towards sort of the edges or breaks in the wood where the wood would be more dry and so naturally show more of the striations. You can also pick things out like knots or deep curves or gashes or slashes or chunks out of the wood. All of those need those edge highlights because those would all be catching light and or be a much lighter tone. So I eventually work my way up and you can see by the end I'm covering very little with the white and just uh, hitting it there. My final step is to take that ivory alone. This is the only time I'm using the ivory by itself. And I do just a few very tiny striations. As well, I then stipple some small dots all over the wood. This is a magic step. Whenever you hit that, uh, that th those individual sort of uh, little tiny dots, it gives you the perception of texture in the wood. Wood is rough. It has lots of sort of bumps and bruises and hashes and scratches and dots and dips. This helps you capture that very simply, very quickly. It takes a few seconds, dot it around, good to go. Now, the problem here with the color pattern that I've laid down is that it looks like extremely dry wood. This would be fine if I were trying to do like a petrified forest or something like that, but assumingly this wood isn't made out of something that's going to turn to ash or crack immediately. This is where we can actually use a wash in a good way. So I get out my Seraphim Sepia and I'm going to just apply a nice, even, smooth coat of it over everything. And the white will be, like the ivory-infused areas, will be much more affected by this than the darker tones. The darker tones will still say relatively dark. But the white will get tinted into this wonderful, natural, very wood color. Again, you don't have to use Seraphim Sepia. Army Paint or Speed Paint makes browns that would work. There's plenty of colors you could use. You could just use thinned sepia ink or something. All of that is perfectly fine. Once that's dry, we've got a nice kicking wood tone ready to go, and our wood is ready. Now, there's some things we'll do later you'll see in the next video to further spice this up, but that tells you exactly how we're going to tackle wood texture. With that done, that means it's time to turn to the armor. This is the part I was really excited to show you. I really like this armor recipe I've come to. It just jumps off the miniature, and honestly, it gets me really excited to paint, because every time I paint it, it looks like crap in the middle and then comes together at the end, and I just think it looks really good. So let's talk about it. We start by base coating the area in some Pro Acryl Burnt Red, okay? Very simple, just get a base coat down. You want it to be nice and smooth, maybe two thin coats if you feel saucy. The next thing I'm going to do is place my shadows. For this, I'm going to use AK's Tenebrous Gray, one of my favorite shadow colors. Uh, it has a sort of purple tone to it when you thin it out, but it's great. It, um, it's very natural, glazes really well, and creates a very uh, credible shadow. So I thin that way down into a glaze, mix a little bit of the burnt red in, just so we're not totally applying black, and there's some bridge there. And then I begin glazing in some shadows. Uh, and so this is just placement around the bottoms of all the areas where it would not be exposed to light. All in all, pretty easy step. Next up, we're going to go to Atom, the Atom Paints. Uh, this is the pure red we're going to do here. I love this red. It's so intense. It's really great. I think uh, it's a, just a fantastic red. And uh, we're going to basically, you know, thin it down to sort of a layer consistency and then cover all the highlight areas we want to highlight. Nothing too complicated, you're just laying down a layer highlight. It won't be a huge break from the burnt red. You might see a little bit of layering, but for the most part it's fairly translucent. It won't be too bad and it doesn't matter our later steps. We'll hide it. Now comes the two tricky steps. So, first off, we're going to get out our AK Pastel Peach, but you could use any sunny skin tone equivalent for this. And I'm going to go and actually knock in with a layer consistency all of the areas I want to be sort of reflective, shiny, high highlight metal. And you'll see as I put this on through the camera, it actually, like if you sort of squint your eyes, it looks like super reflective non-metallic red. You have to squint a little. Um, it's rough, but I do basically two passes around the miniature, knocking in these highlights everywhere I want them to be. It looks clown show and goofball and silly. I know, but trust me, this is how we get the really intense kick in red. So, uh, next up, 
we're going to get out. I'm going to use Pro Acryl fluorescent orange for this, but you can use any fluorescent orange um, that isn't garbage, uh, which I think the other ones that aren't is basically golden high flow, um, but your list may vary. I think those are really the two that are quite nice. There may be some other ones I haven't used. If you like it, it's fine. Get a fluorescent orange. And you're going to cover all of the areas that were pastel peach and more. So, in other words, you'll see my brush work the, the orange over and beyond the edge of the pastel peach or that effectively sunny skin tone type tone. I'm going to go a lot farther than that because I want the orange to help bridge into that original red. So I don't necessarily cover every part that was red, but I cover a lot of it. Once that fluorescent has completely dried, I then come in and begin to glaze very thinly uh, the atom red back over the top of it. You can't work too thin here effectively because what's going to happen is the very bright tone will start pushing the orange slightly into red as we go, and it will also help hide a lot of your previous layers. It may take two or three glazes around the miniature. That's fine. In the end, working thinner allows you to build it and make sure that you don't destroy your original orange tone, and you still get a lot of that really bright pop and fluorescent shining up and through the red layers above it. Once that's good to go, uh, you know, I start tackling things like some edge highlights and stuff like that. This is the exact same st with steps. I put I edge highlight with the pastel peach, run the orange over top, then take some red glaze over it. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Our journey really from this point is to bring everything together. And what that means is glazes of a lot of the half steps. So I go back with a little bit of like the burnt red and thin it down and then I glaze on the lower parts, not in the fluorescent areas, in the lower parts to connect the original red to the shadow. I do some more glazes of the red. I do some glazes of mixes of the atom red and the burnt red. I do some more glazes of the uh, burnt red and the tenebrous gray, right? And so on. And all in all, with all the glazes done, this is how it came out. Uh, at where we sit right now. There you go. I think this is looking pretty cool. Now I did go ahead and pop in all of the shadows, like I blacklined everything so you can see what's actually supposed to be red. This is how it looks right now. We've still got a long way to go on this figure, but I think it looks pretty darn cool so far. So, uh, that's how I achieve that pop in red as well as how you do wood texture. I know this is kind of a weird video because it's these two things together, but the Warp Blaster is so big and contains so many elements of how I'm going to paint my army. Uh, I thought this would be a neat chance to show you two different awesome techniques. I hope you liked it. If you did, give it a like. Subscribe for additional hobby cheating. We have new videos here every Saturday. If you've got a question about anything on this figure or I'm painting or my Skaven or just life in general, drop it down in the comments below. I always answer every question asked. If you want to support the channel, there's lots of ways you can do so. You can hit all those buttons, click things that make dings. You can also, of course, look down below. There's a merch store down there. There are affiliate links to pick up your hobby supplies. They don't cost you anything extra. In fact, they often save you money and it gives the channel a nice kickback. There's also, of course, our Patreon focused on review and feedback and taking your next step on your hobby journey. We'd love to have you as part of the community. As always, though, I thank you so much for watching this one. I hope to see you next week when we tackle some other really cool elements of this figure. And as always, we'll see you next time.